this is a very important question because sometimes people ask, how in the world do all these different nations have a different God that they consider savior? Well, this is a deeper question and requires a lot of research, but I'm gonna try to um, give you a quick answer um, and that way you can go research it later. So in the Bible, it speaks of these spiritual entities that rebelled against God, the true and living God. They're called Elohim, they're little gods, and sometimes they're titled sons of God, principalities, their powers, rulers, right? And so we see in the scriptures where one of these rebels actually deceives Eve into eating the fruit of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. We also see that humanity rejects God because of sin. And so God actually literally gives humanity over to a group of Elohim little gods to manage or take um, oversight of nations and groups of people. This is recorded in the incident of the Tower of Babel. So they all had the same language and they were building a tower to heaven in a rebellious spirit against the creator God. God disseminates them, um, changes their language, and now they're governed by spiritual entities over each and every nation. And this is how every nation has a separate God that they serve. Now, these Elohim were supposed to be literally teaching mankind to worship the true and living God, but they became rebels themselves and they wanted to receive the glory from humanity and worship from humanity. And so every nation had their own separate gods. And this is where you can go into the scriptures and you see where, you know, David is bringing the Ark of the Covenant and they're fighting against different groups of people. And they're talking about the different groups of people and the gods that they serve and the Ark of the Covenant and Yahweh basically destroying their gods. You also see where Daniel is praying and an angel comes and appears to him and says, hey, Daniel, God heard your prayer, but the prince of, you know, Persia were, was holding us up. You see in these scriptures that there's principalities who are governed different nations and people, okay? And so basically everybody had a different little God that they are serving. But God had his own portion of people that he set aside. He called Abraham out of the group of humanity and he set him aside and he tested him to see if his faith was there. And so you have the story of Abraham about to sacrifice his son Isaac. His faith in God, you know, basically was a credit to him. And God is literally setting his portion, his inheritance aside. Okay, we see this in Deuteron Deuteronomy. And so you have this whole picture of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Jacob being called Israel. And these are the group of people that God is setting aside to show all the other nations who he truly is. His whole goal has always been to save humanity, to save all nations. And that's why he literally promised Abraham that I'm going to make you a father of many nations. Because what he was trying to do from the very beginning is that have a earthly creation who literally represented him, his heavenly kingdom in the unseen and his earthly kingdom representing him here in earth. But because of sin, all of that kind of intervened and messed up God's plan, but God never stopped. His whole goal was to save humanity and save us from sin. So you see from there that God intervenes and he is literally setting a group of people to show all the other nations like, you know, these little gods are not me. You all should turn from your evil ways and worship the true and living God. These little gods are rebels and they don't love you. They hate you. So this is the story and the theme that runs throughout the scriptures. I hope that makes sense. If you want some further information, I highly recommend reading Michael Heiser's book, The Unseen Realm. He does an excellent job going through the scriptures, demonstrating and showing you this theme that runs throughout the whole Bible.